Hi everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we are making this beautiful steampunk cardigan. This is actually part of my Halloween costume for 2018, but you can use this and wear this for any time of the year if you wanted to wear a nice cardigan. And you don't even need the steampunk um, embellishments. You can just wear this as a cardigan itself. It's so much fun to make. It is super beautiful. So let's get started. I'm going to get into the supplies, then answer some frequently asked questions, and then we'll get into making this project. So big thank you to Red Heart Yarns for providing this yarn today. We are using six balls of this soft yarn. This yarn uh, color, main color, I am using grape, but you can use any color that you want. There are so many colors of the soft yarn, and I love it. This is a size 4 worsted weight medium yarn. Now, you can use any size 4 worsted weight or an Aran yarn. I would not go down to a double knitting yarn, only because this piece might turn out to be a little bit smaller. Also, um, this is 256 yard balls. I used six of these and I roughly guesstimated about 1,500 yards of yarn, okay? A little bit less maybe than 1,500 yards of yarn total for this project. And I have an, um, an extra different color on the edge and that is made with Red Heart Super Saver yarn. And the color I use for my um, outline is medium purple. There's so many colors. Again, that's a size 4 worsted weight medium yarn. So you can use anything like this or anything like the soft yarn. So there's just a little bit of this yarn used. So big thank you to Red Heart Yarns for this project, for making, um, giving us this yarn for this project. That was awesome. So also, you're going to need the crochet hook, which is a size H crochet hook that's five millimeters. This fancy hook I got from the Etsy shop would be fancy. You can get this hook, the same one, uh, very similar ones. They're hand carved, ergonomic, and handcrafted. For those of you who like to crochet for really long periods of time, there's left-handed hooks, right-handed hooks, international shipping. So check out the link in the description of this video and I will have a link to that shop where you can get this hook. Also, you're going to need some scissors and some yarn needles. Here are my other supplies I have here. I also am using, for scissors and yarn needles, obviously cutting your yarn, sewing things together, and sewing in some ends. And this chain here, I got this chain from Joanne uh, Craft Stores. And this is a chain that you need to use for um, making the embellishments for the steampunk design. I'll put this link in the description of this video. I also have these buttons which I don't actually have the label for. I got this from, oh, excuse me, from the Joanne store as well. It says favorite findings. It was just a big bag of buttons. <laughs> so they are the steampunk design. So very cool. I just put them in a Ziploc bag because they're, uh, I opened the package <laughs> when I used them but they have the steampunk look to them. So those are all the supplies. Now I do recommend having a um, measure tape as well because this goes off of measurements of your body, of how you, how, what size you want to make it. You can make it any size you want just by measurements, which is really cool. And I explain that throughout this video tutorial. I am going to explain the sizing now because I get that question a lot if you can make this in bigger or smaller sizes, and yes, you can. So the measurements of this one, this is going to be size medium to large, okay? I am a size medium to large at this point in my life right now. <laughs> so <laughs> I made it to fit me, and you, as you can see me in the photos of this um, cardigan, it fits me pretty decently. A little bit loose, but not bad, and it's very comfortable and uh, loose-fitted enough to be comfy so it's not too tight. So this cardigan, the length of the front panels here, and this will all be in the notes section by the way, so you can check out yarnutopia.com if you want to just uh, fast forward this video, but um, the length of the front panel here, what we're going to be making, we're making this panel and then that panel, and that is 25 inches long. 
in this tutorial. Okay, the length of the back piece, as you can see on the bottom here, this is a little bit longer because they have these points in the back, like the tuxedo look. And that length from the top to the bottom back is 33 inches long. Okay, then the waist of this from this side across to that side on the waist part is 46 inches around. Okay, the sleeve length, so from the top of the sleeve down to the bottom of the sleeve, that is 23 inches long. And the width of the sleeve upper part, the sleeve upper part right here, is let's see here sleeve width upper part is 20 inches around and the sleeve width on the lower part is 18 inches around okay right here okay this midsection right here around we decrease in this tutorial to eight inches but like I said, you can make this any size you want, and throughout this tutorial, I will show you and teach you how to make this. You don't have to decrease as much as this, or you can decrease even more, and you can do more rows to make your sleeves longer, obviously, so that's totally creator's choice. And the last measurement I have is the collar height up here. We make this collar long, and then we fold it in half and sew it down. And this is folded in half. It is two inches. Okay, so that's the collar height. So those are all the measurements I took of this piece. So you can make yours um, the same size, or if you need it bigger or smaller throughout this tutorial, I show you and teach you how to do that if you need it longer or shorter or wider or smaller. And on the back side of this, it's one of my favorite parts. I'm gonna flip this over. You can see that we added the steampunk look on the back too with those embellishments. You can really add the embellishments however you want to make them super fabulous in the middle there. And you can see those in the photos as well. So those are all the supplies you need, all the information about sizing. Um, this is, we're gonna start from the back, actually we're gonna start the back piece first. We're gonna start from the bottom here and work our way up. And then we're gonna do the two front panels, add the sleeves and then the collar and then the embellishments. It is so super fabulous. And uh, it just took me a, a few days to make. I was really happy to make this piece. So check out my Halloween costumes for 2018, but you can also wear this any time of the year. Big thank you to Red Heart Yarns for this yarn. Big thank you to my dad, Fouad Uzmat, for taking the time to make this video with us and edit this video tutorial and take the photos of me in this beautiful cardigan. And also make sure before you start making this to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get the update on when we post our next video. Make sure to join us on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all those places. And uh, those links and all the information is in the description of this video. So big thank you for watching. Let's get started and make this steampunk cardigan. All right, let's start out with a slip knot. So put your short end over your long end, then fold this down and pull that long end through and pull tight. And then insert your hook and pull that tight and we can start. So let's start out, we're gonna make the back, we're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up and we're gonna start with the back side first. So we have to chain two. So yarn over and pull through one, and two and in that second chain from the hook we are going to put three single crochets so go into that it's our first chain right here go in then yarn over and pull that through then yarn over and pull through two loops and that's a single crochet so we have to do that three times so that was one go back in yarn over pull through yarn over and pull through two loops that's two and go back in for your third single crochet, okay? And that's row one, <laughs> easy enough. Chain up one, turn the work around, okay? And we're going to work in each one of these three stitches here. So you can see one, two, and three. So in each of these three stitches, we are just going to put one single crochet. So go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two, Go into the next one, single crochet, and the next one, right there, single crochet. And that's row two, very simple so far. Let's chain up one and turn our work around. 
Okay, we're going to turn our work every row, and you can see our three stitches here, one, two, three. And in each one of these stitches now, for row three, we are going to put two single crochets in each one of those stitches. So go into this very first stitch right here and make two single crochets, so one and two. Then the next stitch also gets two single crochets, one and two. And the next stitch also gets two single crochets, one and two. So now you should have six single crochets on row three. Going on to row four, we are going to repeat row two. So let's chain up one, turn our work around, and just put one single crochet into each stitch across. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so that was row four. Going on to row five, we're going pretty quickly here already. You chain up one, turn your work around. Okay, and for row five, we are going to put two single crochets in the first stitch, one and two. Then we're just going to put one single crochet in each of the stitches across until there is one stitch left. So one, 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 and one. And now there's one stitch left right here. We're going to put two single crochets in the very last stitch on this row. Just like that. So actually on this row, um, row five, you should have eight single crochets across. So chain up one, turn your work around. Row six now is basically a repeat of row two. We're just going to put one single crochet in each stitch across. So there should be eight single crochets across still. Then what we're going to do for row seven, turn your work, chain up one. So rows seven through 33, so the next section here, we're increasing, we're making these triangle shapes actually. So row seven is a repeat of row five so put two single crochets in the first and last stitch, but put one single crochet in each stitch between them. And then row eight is going to be just single crocheting across. Then row nine is going to be the increase row where we put two single crochets in the first stitch and two single crochets in the last stitch, but one single crochet in each stitch in between. And then row 10 is just going to be a single crochet across row. So just one single crochet in each stitch across. So we're repeating this sequence until row 33. That will be an increase row. You want to end on a repeat of row 5, which is uh, an increase row. Okay. And you want to actually have this piece, you can increase even more if you need to, but just um, go with the concept of um, single crocheting the increasing uh, part here. So there's what we have so far. So this is row eight, okay? So just repeat rows five and six, how I did those, so that your piece is becoming a big triangle, okay? I'm going to lay this down right here so you can see we're going to have it come out to be a triangle. Now what you want to do is have this top line, this top line across here to be, to measure half of, okay it says um, for half of your back across, okay. So my back across is 20 inches, okay. So I'm going to want to increase this piece until this line right here increases up until it's 10 inches because my back across is 20 inches so I want it to be half of my back okay I hope that makes sense you'll see it in the photos and you'll see it in the next clip here but I just wanted to tell you to increase um, do that increase until this is half of your back so it might be more and it might be less if you're a different size than me obviously but I want this to fit me so I'm going to continue repeating rows five and six until this piece measures half of my back across so it's, it's going to measure 10 inches for me 
Um, so that is actually going to get me to, oops, I didn't do this right. It's going to get me to row 33. And once I finish row 33, then I will come back on screen. Uh, we will go on to the next step together. All right, I just finished row 33. So uh, your last row should be, or I'm sorry, I, I did thir row 34. Um, I was like looking, I was like, there's no increase. Your last row should be an increase um, row. But I ended up actually doing an extra row because um, of the repeat. I did, you know, the regular single crochet row and then the two in the first and two in the last and then a single crochet row and then um, two in the first and then two in the last. So I actually ended on row 34 here. This is row 34. I have 36 stitches across here. This is the triangle. But this measurement now is about 10 inches. So stretch to be about 10 inches. Yep, right there. Wow. A little bit more even. A little like 10 and a half inches. That's like perfect. <laughs> Yay me. <laughs> so anyway, you want it to be half your back size. So like I said, from right above my hips, um, I guess right above my butt, it's like v from one side to the other side, it's 20 or it's, um, yeah, 20 inches across my back. So I did this halfway. So now once you are at this point, we still have a little bit extra to go. And then we are going to make the other piece. If you, saw, if you saw the photos, there's this triangle and then there's another triangle. So we'll get to that triangle in a few minutes. But what we're going to do next is go on to, um, well, for you it will be row 34. Uh, for me in this video tutorial, I'm going on to row 35, but it's just single crocheting across. So rows 34 to 49, you're going to chain one and turn your work. And you're just going to put one single crochet into each stitch across. Okay, that's for these next few rows. So, um, and, and really, I mean, if you needed to also make your triangles bigger, if you needed to continue the increase, if your back is, uh, your across your back is longer or wider, then you can continue the repeat of doing the increase uh, and doing the increase, making your triangles bigger. And then just go on to this next step after your piece is as wide as you need it to be. So this is pretty simple. Then you can go on to the repeat of just single crocheting across for uh, a few rows. I'm doing rows 34 to 49. And once I'm ready to go on to row 50, there's one step in between there. So I will show you how to do that next. All right, welcome back. I just finished row 49. So this is what your piece should look like. Okay, um, so you can see the, the decrease we stopped because we just did a few rows here of no decrease, or I'm sorry, increase. No increase at this point. So the edges should become straight right here. And that's what that looks like. So now at this point, we are gonna, if you're in your first piece, you're gonna fasten this one off and you're going to rewind this and make one more exactly like this from uh, just repeating rows one through 49. So for your first piece, we are going to fasten it off. So chain one, and we're gonna fasten off with a long tail because we are actually going to sew this side to our second piece when we finish it. So I'm just going to cut the yarn long and then pull that all the way through that chain one that we just created and then pull that tight. Okay, that was our first piece. Now, what I need you to do is rewind this and make one exactly like this. And once you have that done, you can go on to this next part. I have one done already. Okay, so we just, um, yeah, exactly the same thing. Exactly the same piece. Okay, but instead of fastening the second one off, I just pulled up the loop here. But um, you want to insert your hook in here. Okay, so once you end your second piece, it should look like this next to each other. This is how it should be. Okay, so lined up, make sure that the sections are all lined up right there. Perfect. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like, like the, the two V's down here, like this. 
okay? So we have to sew up this center and we have to continue working. However, we want to have everything on the right side because we are basically turning our work and working across rows now. So this is our starting point. Do not fasten off your second piece. We're going to be turning our work around, okay? Right there is where we're going to start our next row, row 50. And then turn this around because you want this long end to be in the center because you're going to use that long end to sew it to this piece right here, okay? And if you want to, you can sew it first and then crochet or you can crochet it first and then sew. Totally up to you, that's the creator's choice. So what we're going to do, I'm going to um, crochet first. So this is row 50, so we're going to chain one and turn our, we turned our work already, okay? So we're gonna work along this edge and just single crochet into each stitch all the way till the center. Once I get to this uh, center point where these two need to be connected, I will come back, show you how to connect the two, go on to the rest of this row, and then we can go on to row 51 after that. All right, continuing row 50 here, I just single crocheted in all of the uh, stitches across this first piece. Now I'm gonna pick up the second piece and move that uh, long strand into the back and go into the very first stitch right here, okay? Grab my working yarn and just continue to single crochet into each stitch on this piece as well, just like that. So across for row 50 I have 72 stitches across now uh, when I finish this row I'll have 72 stitches because each of these pieces had 36 stitches across so 36 and there's two pieces 36 times 2 is 72 okay so I'm just going to single crochet for the rest of this row and then I will show you uh, we'll go on to row 51 and I'll show you how to sew the center up in the middle all right, just finished row 50 here. I'm gonna pull up this loop before we go on to row 51. I do wanna show you without um, you know, tang or twisting your work right here, this is what it should look like in the center. And we're gonna take this, uh, we're gonna take our, our yarn needle and we're gonna yarn our needle with that strand, that long strand that we cut earlier. Just like this, sort of, there we go. Okay, we're going to yarn our needle with that strand, and we are going to put this, kind of fold it upwards like this so that it's creating this like lip up like this, okay? And we are going to whip stitch this down. So I'm just going to go into this side and out this side, okay? And you kind of want to make sure it's flat, okay? And don't pull your stitches too tight where you can definitely see the seam. Make sure your rows are all lined up. And just keep going from one side every time, going into this side, out this side every time. And that is considered a whip stitch, okay? And I'm just going to sew this all the way to the bottom. And if you don't want to do this, that's totally fine. You just know that your design on your back will be a little bit different than the one that I'm making. So that's creator's choice too. I mean, you don't have to sew this up. You can leave it open and have the two flaps um, kind of flapping in the back differently. All right, so once you get down to the bottom here, I just have a few more stitches to go. So you can just continue watching me. I'm going to tie this off. Here. Make sure everything's lined up. There we go. Okay, so when you're on your last part here, everything's all lined up. That looks good. Okay, so what we're going to do is go around a couple of those stitches. Keep your finger in this loop. Okay, come back around to the back of this loop right here and then pull that forward and pull it tight and that creates a knot. Okay, and you can do that once or twice. Just go in, around, 
keep your finger in the loop come back through the loop and then pull tight and then you want to take this straggler here this long strand <clears throat> and just go up into the stitches and just sew this in and hide it just like this so that's hidden and secure it's not going to unravel and then you want to just take the extra and trim that okay and there is the center and it's all attached and now we have one big back piece with these two pieces now don't worry about this curling or anything we will be making an edge and if you wanted to you can even block this where you pin it down wet it and then let it dry and it should keep its shape but um, we are going to make an edge that will prevent this from curling up like that so don't worry about that right now we will do that way later in this tutorial so going on to row 51 rows 51 to 93 okay so it's a long back we're going to make the rest of the back basically um except up until the shoulders <laughs> so rows 51 to 93 it's going to be a while we are going to just single crochet across chain one turn your work and then single crochet across and then chain one turn your work and single crochet across so it might i mean be quicker because the single crochet is so uh, such an easy stitch um but you can go and make it as long as you want really i'm going to get to row 93 and that will get right below or right at my armpits okay right to my armpit and the length of this is going to be down to right above the back of my knees. You can see the photos on where it lies on my body, um, but that's how, how many stitches I need to fit in my body. But you can make as many rows as you need to. You can make this shorter even if you want, um, so you don't have to make it even as long as me. Or you can make it longer. But just get to the point, you can do these rows, this repeat row of just single crocheting across, um, you can do it as much as you want until you get to the bottom of your armpits because we do need to decrease to come up over the armpits. Okay, this is the center. You can see the seam right here. Yeah, go into all the stitches. Just don't miss a stitch. Okay, so like I said, I'll have the 72 stitches across. So I'm going to count my stitches every few rows and I'm just going to continue working this repeat until I finish row 93. Once I'm finished with row 93, we'll come back. Row 94 is going to be our first decrease. All right, welcome back. That took a little bit of time for me. Um, so you can see uh, what it looks like right now. This is the piece. So we did all of this right here, this big chunk of section right here. So this is what your piece should look like. Now I did measure this um, from this tip right here all the way up to the top and that measures 24 inches for me, okay? And I think that's a good amount of um, time to stop till we want to decrease for the shoulders. So what we're going to do, so this, this actually hits right where the bottom of my armpit is. Actually, if you want me to go in the, it hits right, okay, zoom out just a little bit. Just zoom out just a little bit. Right here. <laughs> so you can see where my armpit right here is. It ends right here, okay? So now, if you can see my shoulder, you can see the line even on my shirt that's kind of dirty. It's got dust on it, or yarn. Lint, I've got lint on my shoulder, you guys. Okay, so we're gonna do the this basically this line right here that comes in toward the back I know this this is kind of weird okay anyway we're gonna come into the back and make the shoulders um, decrease so I measured my shoulders across and there this is about 24 inches long which is interesting because this is 24 inches this way and for me my height this is 24 inches across let me see make sure 21 inches across so it stretches though up to 22 inches across okay so and then the length of this is 24 inches long okay so what we want to do is decrease I'm 17 what was it 17 
or 18 inches. My dad measured me. Um, I think it was 18 inches uh, across my shoulders from one shoulder to the other shoulder. So we want to decrease this to measure that basically. And the, I'll show you the repeat decrease here. So what we want to do is chain one. Okay, this is going to be row 94. Okay, turn your work around. Do, do, do. Okay, so for me, this is row 94. For you, it might be a different row depending on how tall you are, how long you want to make yours. We're going to single crochet these first two stitches together. Okay, so go into this first stitch, yarn over and pull through, go into the very next stitch, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's a single crochet decrease. Now we're just going to single crochet in the rest of the stitches across until there are two stitches left. Once there's two stitches left, I'll come on screen, show you what to do next, and then we can go on to row 95. All right, when you have two stitches left on row 94, we are going to go into this for this next one right here, then yarn over and pull it through, go into the last stitch right away, and then yarn over and pull that through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's a single crochet decrease, okay? Then we're gonna chain one and go on to row 95, and rows 95 till, um, I'll have to let you know actually how many rows I actually do because I haven't done this part yet. But the next few rows, we are going to repeat row 94. So go into this first stitch and the second stitch, just like this. Make a single crochet decrease. Then single crochet into each stitch across until two stitches are left. And then uh, single crochet those two together. Okay, just like we did row 94. So repeat row 94 until your um, your row measures across your shoulders. So uh, if it's 17 or 18 inches like mine, I'm going to go down to 18 inches on here. So it was uh, when I measured it, it was about 21 or 22 inches. So I'm going to decrease until I get to 18 inches across. I hope that makes sense. I am going to continue repeating row 94. I will let you know what row I end on to go on to the next step in the next clip. So good luck and I'll see you in just a second. All right, welcome back. I just finished, actually I, I had to do um, rows 95 to 99 as a repeat of uh, row 94. So as you can see, I just ended on row 99 and you can see the uh, decrease has made this slant in. And as you can see across here, all the way across, um, this is kind of what it's starting to look like. So at this point, I have decreased enough and um, this measures across here 18 inches for me. I have 60 stitches across, okay? So I decreased quite a bit to get down to 60 stitches across. So going on to now the rest of the rows for the back piece, we are just going to basically be repeating what we did um, for rows 34 to 49. Just single crochet across, chain one, turn your work, and single crochet across. Um, now we want to get it to be, I'll show you here, right down here. From this point of our work, right here where the um, where the triangle stops uh, increasing from here up all the way up to the top well this will be from the bottom down here is from the bottom and this is to the top so however long you want your piece to be just uh, continue now making it the length you need it to be. I hope that makes sense. Um, you, I'm going to do 30 rows total. So right here is where the armpit starts. Okay, so now we have to make basically up on the shoulder, um, if you want to zoom out just a little bit and show, up on the shoulder part, this section from here up to here. That's what we're doing. Okay, right here, up here. We're going to be making that part. So for me, um, comfortably on my body, it'll be eight inches total. So I measured out what eight inches is down here on my um, gauge, basically, and that's 30 rows total. So I'm going to continue doing that. And this piece then, 
so then once I do eight rows eight more rows from from this point here from the very bottom of I want it to cover my backside basically so right below my hips up to my shoulder this is the length that from here up to the very end of what I'm creating right now is going to measure so for me that's about 26 inches okay so I want to maybe it's 27 inches but I just want it to be the length from that point up to the top and we're just single crocheting across now we're not doing any more increases or decreases we are just single crocheting across uh, to make this the height that we need to to go up our back okay so there's no other step after this so I am going to do this is row 100 for me I'm going to do rows 100 through 130 and hope that that's um, the length that I needed to be if you're following along with the written instructions though the written instructions are correct on yarnutopia.com so make sure you check those instructions out and see the numbers of rows and the stitch count for each row and everything like that I am going to continue working this single crochet rows until I reach row 130 and once I'm finished with row 130 I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step together. All right, I just finished row 130. This piece is getting quite long, um, but as you can see, this upper part here is straight and we have this looking like this right now. So this length now is going to fit uh, from this point here. This is right by my hip, or I guess a little bit around my hip area and then this is going to hit right here to the bottom of my armpit and then my arm hole my arm is going to fit through this section here so if you need to do more rows or less rows that's totally up to you and you can do that but when you're ready to fasten that off don't fasten off <laughs> we are actually going to uh, make an easier step for us later and we're going to crochet around this entire piece okay so what I'm actually going to do is not crochet along this edge anymore this was row 130 we are going to grow go around this piece down this edge all the way down to this point up through this point here and then back through all the way up to this corner once we get back to this corner right here we are going to fasten off so I'm going to show you how to crochet along the edge because these are not stitches you basically want to put your uh, crochet hook wherever your hook fits like that just single crochet go in yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and uh, it might actually work out to do one single crochet in each row if you can see the rows just single crochet down the rows just like that that'll clean up this edge and make it look super um, straight and fabulous and it'll be much easier later for when we have to sew our pieces together for when we have to crochet in our piece and attach pieces so uh, and sew things together so just um, single crochet around this entire piece like I said wherever your hook fits just single crochet I don't have I won't have a stitch count because it's basically wherever you want wherever you feel comfortable just don't put too many stitches where it starts to get bunched up or anything you want to make sure this lies flat all the way around so just do that all the way around and then I am going to come back when I'm about to fasten this part off and we can finally go to the front panels all right just finished single crocheting around like I said we're gonna end here and we're gonna slip stitch we're not gonna work across this row we're gonna just slip stitch to the first stitch right here go in yarn over pull through and pull through this stitch just like that chain one we are going to fasten off with a long tail only because we're gonna use that for sewing later so I'm just gonna cut this yarn and then I'm gonna pull it all the way through this like that and pull it tight okay so there you have it your your backside piece is complete if you need to lay this out and um, kind of shape it the way you need it to be stretch it out 
that edge though makes it nice and clean on the edge it looks really good so what we're going to do right now look at that oh my gosh it's like perfect this is awesome <laughs> Okay, now what we're going to do, I just fold it, I'm just folding it up here. We're going to set this aside. We want to make the front panels next. So let's grab some more yarn here, make a slip knot. We're going to do the front panels. Now, I'm only going to make one here, and then you have to make another one because they're exactly the same on the right and left side. So make a slip knot. You know how to do that already. Okay, insert your hook. Okay, chain, let's see here, chain 40 or half of the front of you. So if you're looking at the front of you from hip to hip, make half of that. Make a chain that's half of the front of you. I guess that makes, hope that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to chain 40 and uh, that will get me to about 10 inches because from one side to the other side of me, I'm 20 inches across. So I need to make something that's 10 inches. Uh, you can also do a front post, or I'm sorry, a foundation. I don't know why I said front post. A foundation double crochet. You can uh, foundation double crochet 40. If you're doing the chaining method like this, um, chain actually 42. But you know what I'm thinking? I probably just foundation double crochet. Why don't I just show you guys how to do that? So foundation double crocheting, we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And if you've seen my other videos doing foundation double crochet, so much, I find it to be so much better just because it's so much easier for me. Um, but what we're going to do is work in that third chain from the hook right there. This is just going to eliminate the chaining method. We're making the chain as we make our first row stitches. So yarn over, go into that very first chain way over here, then yarn over and pull it through the chain, then yarn over and pull through one loop on your hook. That creates the foundation chain, the bottom chain, okay? Then just finish these three loops off with a double crochet stitch. So yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two, and that's your double crochet. And you can see that that is our first stitch just like that. All right, now at the bottom here, this base of this stitch is where we're going to work in. And you can see um, at the base here, there are two loops, okay? One right here and one in the back there, okay? So there's this loop here and then this loop here. So we're gonna actually insert our hook from this side into that little bottom base of the um, stitch, which is considered the foundation chain right there. So what we're going to do, I like to work this way, like this, so yarn over, go into the base of that stitch, right there, oops, get all your loops on there, there we go, then yarn over, pull through that stitch or that chain there, base of that stitch, then yarn over and pull through one loop that's creating the base of the next stitch, then yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two, and that creates another double crochet, the foundation double crochet. So now we're just going to repeat that, so you can see at the base here, there's this loop and this loop right here. That is where we're going to work into for the next stitch. So yarn over, go to the base right there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, or, I'm sorry, I yarn over and pull through one, I'm sorry. Then yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two. So, I'm so sorry, let me start over. Yarn over, go into the base of that stitch, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over and pull through one. I don't know why I said two <laughs> earlier. Then yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two. Just like that. Okay? So just make um, 40 or half your front of you, uh, enough for half the front of you. So I'm going to do 40 of these and actually on mine, this chain up stitch right here, you can see this chain up stitch one and two, this stitch right here is going to count as a stitch for me. So I'm going to actually count that one as one of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six done. I'm going to make 40 of these total and then I'll come up uh, back on screen and we'll go on to row two together. 
All right, I have 40 foundation double crochet stitches. Um, now, if you had to do more or less than me, this is half of the front of me. This is what it will measure out to be. Um, but if you need to do more or less than me, just make sure it's an even number. So starting out, we're going to, for row two, chain up two, one and two. That does not count as anything from here and throughout this whole pattern. It doesn't count as anything. Just turn your work around. And what we're going to do is skip this first stitch right here, and we are going to double crochet into the second stitch right here. So yarn over, skip this first stitch, go into the second stitch right here, yarn over and pull that through, then yarn over and pull through two of the loops, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. That's a double crochet. We are going to make a crisscross stitch, so we are going to work into the stitch that we skipped right here. So yarn over, go in front of your work into the stitch, wrap around the double crochet and pull it through the stitch like that. You can kind of pull up a little bit too. Then yarn over and pull through two loops and yarn over and pull through two loops. So basically we made a double crochet wrapped around the double crochet in there. Made it into that stitch. So now we are going to repeat that little sequence all the way around. So skip this next stitch, go into this next stitch here for a double crochet, and then double crochet into the skipped stitch right here. Just pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And there's your crisscross stitching, just like that. Okay, skip the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, and then double crochet into the skipped stitch. Okay, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next, then double crochet into the skipped stitch, working around your double crochet, just like that. So you can see those crisscross stitches looking good. Awesome. So just do that all the way across, and then I'll meet you up for row three. All right, your last crisscross will be in this chain right here. So go into that one and then double crochet into the skipped stitch that we just skipped. Okay, just like that. So that is your piece, what it should look like all the way across. Okay, so now going on to row three, we are going to chain up two, one and two, turn the work around and just repeat row two. And we are going to do that until we finish row 22. Okay, so if you need to rewind this to see what I did for row two, go ahead. Otherwise, just uh, continue doing these crisscross stitches across, then chain up two, turn your work around, and continue with the crisscross stitches until row uh, until you finish row 22. Once I'm finished with row 22, we have to do we have to start decreasing for the arm area. So I am going to repeat this until I finish row 22 and once I do that, we'll go on to row 23 together. All right, welcome back. So I just finished row 22, so this is what your piece should look like. Okay, so I did all the crisscross rows. Everything looks good. This is a really fun stitch and I really like it a lot. So now going on to row 23, we are going to make the decrease. So at this point, this should be um, right at the base of your armpit in the front of you. So if you want this to be longer, go right ahead, make it as long as you want to, on t it's like on down on your thigh or on your leg, um, and make it as long as you want to until you're ready to decrease going inward toward your arm and your armpit, okay? On uh, both sides, we're going to decrease on both sides. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to chain, we chained up two here. I turned my work around. And we are going to double crochet these first two stitches together. So yarn over, go into this very first stitch right here, then yarn over and pull through, and yarn over and pull through two loops. Hold these two loops on your hook and yarn over again and go into the next stitch. Then yarn over and pull that through, and yarn over and pull through two loops. So now we have three loops left on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. 
that's a double crochet two together stitch okay this chain of two right here isn't counting as anything just like we did throughout the whole pattern that doesn't count as anything so we have a double crochet two together and now we're going to continue with our pattern uh, that we've been doing the crisscross stitches so skip this stitch go into the next and double crochet then double crochet into the skipped stitch working around that double crochet we just created and there's your crisscross stitch so we're going to do that all the way across until there are two stitches left. Once there's two stitches left, I'll come back on screen and I'll show you what to do next. And then we'll go on to the next row together. Alright, when you have two stitches left here, we are going to double crochet those two together. So yarn over, go into this very next stitch right here. Yarn over, pull through, and yarn over and pull through two loops. Then yarn over and go into the very last stitch right here yarn over and pull through, yarn over pull through two, and now we have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. So we just double crocheted those two together. Now going on to the next row, we are going to chain up two, and going on to row 24, turn the work around, and we are going to actually double crochet three together. So this stitch, this stitch, and this stitch all together. So yarn over, go into the very first stitch which is our decrease stitch anyway yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through two loops okay and do that in the next stitch as well so yarn over go into the next stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and in this very next stitch two yarn over go in yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two so now we have four loops on the hook Yarn over and pull through all four of those loops, and you've just made a double crochet three together decrease stitch. Now we are going to continue our pattern with the crisscross stitches. So skip the next stitch and double crochet into this next stitch. And then double crochet into the stitch we skipped. And repeat that little sequence all the way across. So skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next. Double crochet into the skipped stitch skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next, uh, double crochet into the skipped stitch. Okay, and do that all the way across until you have three stitches left. The last three stitches will be a crisscross stitch and then your um, decrease stitch from the previous row. So once I have three stitches left on this row, I'll come back and show you what to do next. All right, once you have three stitches left, here is our crisscross stitch and then this decrease stitch right there. We are going to decrease all three of these stitches together. So yarn over, go into this next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Do that same thing in the next stitch and the same thing into the last stitch. So we have four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops. So we just did a three double crochet decrease right there. Now chain up two and going on to um, let's see, row 25, so rows, tw the next four rows actually, row 25, 26, 27, and 28, all four of the next rows are going to be a repeat of row 24, okay, so double crochet these first three stitches together, one, two, and three together, and then crisscross stitch across until three stitches are left, and then you want to um, double crochet those last three stitches together. Sorry, I was like thinking, <laughs> what am I going to say next? Hmm. <laughs> so um, just repeat row 24 for rows 25, 26, 27, and 28. Okay, so if you need to rewind this to see what I did for row 24, go right ahead, rewind this. I am going to do that for the next four rows, and then I'll meet you up. We'll go on to row 29 together. Okay, so I just finished row 28 here, so you can see that it is coming in on both ends here. Okay, we just did those double crochet three together stitches on each end. So you can see that it's decreased. Now, I have 22 stitches across at uh, row 28, at the end of row 28 here. So going on to row 29, we are going to chain up two, turn our work around, and actually rows 29 to 42, we are going to do this. We are going to chain up two and turn our work. 
we're going to put a regular double crochet into this first stitch okay then we are going to do our crisscross stitches on the crisscross stitches so skip one double crochet in the next double crochet into the skipped stitch then skip one double crochet in the next and then double crochet into the skipped stitch and do that until there's one stitch left and since there will be one stitch left you won't be able to crisscross stitch anymore anyways we are going to put a regular double crochet onto the last stitch or into the last stitch and you can actually continue watching because I'm going a little bit faster here you can just see um, that I'm just doing crisscross stitches and then I'm going to just put one double crochet into the last stitch but then for row 30 it's the same concept we're just doing this until row um, 49 or yeah 42 sorry I was looking at my um, pattern so there's one stitch left right here double crochet into that okay then chain up two awesome turn your work around going on to row 30 now double crochet into this first stitch skip the next double crochet in the next and double crochet into the skipped stitch just repeat that last row so just repeat row 29 until you hit row 42 once you're finished with row 42 I will come back on screen I'll explain a few things and we can go on to the next step together all right, welcome back. I just finished row 42, so this is what your piece should look like right now. Okay, so we have uh, the start of the armpit, and then this will be around the uh, top of the arm, like by the shoulder area. So now, instead of fastening off here, just like we did for the back piece, we want to continue down this edge, single crocheting, all the way down, under, down here, and then up, back through here, and then end right here okay so you don't have to single crochet across the top there so just single crochet along the edge basically again like I said earlier wherever your hook fits is where you want to single crochet so just do that all the way around this piece and once I come around to this side here back over here then I will show you how to fasten off and we will go on to the next step together. When you come back around, just slip stitch to this very first stitch right up here. Just slip stitch to that. And then you can chain one, and just like the other piece, we're gonna cut our yarn long for sewing. Let me get this long. There we go. And we're gonna pull it through that chain one and pull tight. Okay, so we have this panel. Now this is the one of the front panels. What I need you to do is rewind this and make one more panel exactly like this one. And once you have that done, we will sew these to our cardigan. All right, I have uh, one already sewn on to this piece here, as you can see. Okay, so I sewed this one on. We're just going to sew up this section and then leave the armhole open and then sew on the shoulder and leave a little bit uh, open here. I know I'm like in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, okay. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to sew this on. So you want to make sure um, the outside is facing outward and this is on the outside here. And how to notice that is these stitches right along the edge right here, you can see them outward. Okay. You can see these little V shapes right here. V shapes, sideways V shapes. If you look at it, the other side of it, you don't see those, okay? You don't see those as all, at all, okay? So you want to make sure that this is facing outside, okay, on that back piece. On this piece, this front piece right here, you can also see the stitches, sideways V, sideways Vs right there, okay? And if you flip it around, you don't see those right there. Okay, so this is going to be the inside. Okay, this is going to be the outside of your work. So we're going to lay those together, and we're going to line this up 
So where this triangle is on the bottom, where this starts right here, we are going to put this corner right on there. Okay? And this goes for the other side too, just so I'm saying. Okay, so line these up. This is going to, this might overlap for you, it might not overlap for you. For me, it overlaps because that's how wide I am around my front. So this will fit me. So then we're going to line this all the way up to the top here. Where this armpit starts, this armpit should start also. Okay, so right around, let me stretch that out a little bit. See, the armpit starts here, the armpit starts here. Okay, so this is what we're going to sew up from here to here. This is what we're sewing up. So what we're actually going to do is sew it inside out because <laughs> it's much cleaner. So what we're going to do, I'm going to open this up, line this up like this. And what I'm going to do is just start, I yarned my needle with some yarn, okay, just a long strand of yarn, and we're going to go, we're going to do a mattress stitch. We're going to start in this bottom corner of this piece here, and we're going to come out from the inside. Then, you want to start on a stitch on this side here, I'll start right about here. We go from the inside out, okay, and we're just going to do that all the way up until we hit that armpit section. Do not sew the arm closed or you won't get your arm out of there. <laughs> so just sew up to the armpit area. Just this is the technique. It's a, called a mattress stitch. If you want to, you could um, do a whip stitch or you could single crochet this closed or even slip stitch it closed with your crochet hook. It is creator's choice, but I just find this to be quite easy, and it is a flat um, seam, and it looks really nice. So I'm going to mattress stitch this up to the top. Also, if you notice that maybe one piece has more stitches than the other, you can't, like, see how it's um, looking like this has more stitch than this, just hypothetically. If this has more stitches than this side, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go into the next stitch on the piece that has more stitches. You'll want to go into the very next stitch of that one, but then go into the same stitch. Whoopsie, I just knotted up my piece here. Sorry guys. Oh man. Yeti. <laughs> There we go. Got it. <laughs> My dad usually helps me untangle things. <laughs> okay, so then you're going to go, if you um, have more stitches on this side and less stitches on this side. Okay, daddy, I'm trying to teach. <laughs> okay, so more stitches on this side, less stitches on this side. You're going to go into the next stitch on this piece, but then go into the same stitch on this side. Okay, and then go into the next piece or next stitch on this piece, and then if you need to go on the same stitch on this side, or just go to the very next one on this one. So just that way it'll line up and be even on both pieces. So anyway, I'm just gonna mattress stitch this all the way up, and uh, we'll come back after I get to the armpit, and we'll go to the next step next. All right, when you get all the way up to the top, we are going to fasten this part off. So just go around a few of the stitches here. Pull this tight. Keep your finger in the loop. And just like I had done. Oh, I, I don't know if I showed this yet. <laughs> I was like, did I show this already earlier? I don't think so. I sew so many things together. Just pull that through. So again, go around. Keep your finger in the loop. Come back through the loop and then pull this tight. And that ties it off, so you can do that once or twice, and then we're just gonna sew in this end. And then what you have to do is at the very bottom where we started, cut your yarn off the ball of your yarn, and do the same exact thing and tie off the bottom as well, and then sew in that end. So just sew that in, back and forth there, make sure it's stretched out, grab your scissors 
and cut. And then do the same thing to the bottom here. I already did that off camera there. So we can save some time. And now we want to sew this piece to this piece right here. So I am going to sew this inside out. So I'm actually going to fold this back. Okay. And we have this long strand here, so we are going to use that and we are going to yarn our needle. Okay. And this one you can just start in this corner here and then go, go through each stitch. <clears throat> so just go through and just do the mattress stitch. Again, if you wanted to do the whip stitch, you can, and if you wanted to do the mattress stitch or a single crochet or slip stitching. There's many different methods to attach things and sew them together. On uh, this piece, though, on the this is the shoulder over the shoulder piece. Um, you want to uh, save five stitches in the toward the toward the chest part. Okay, I'm going pretty fast here, so you can just continue watching, and I'll show you exactly what I mean before we fasten this off. We are going to save five stitches on the front panel and we'll fasten off before five stitches because we want a little bit of a lip, a little bit of a collar kind of piece. So almost done. So we're going to count here from the corner. One, two, three, four, and five. So I have two more stitches left here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to end here. So this is going to be like a little bit of a flap. And then I'm going to come around these stitches, keep my finger in the loop like I did earlier, and pull this through, and then tie that off. And then I'm going to just sew this end in. And you can do it once or twice, like I said earlier as well. Just sew this end in. Okay, and on your second panel, you have to do the same exact thing, just opposite, because I, I already did it off camera, but I'll show you exactly, you just cut any extra, weave in all your ends, flip this back out, the right side out, and there you have your, it looks like a vest right now, you could just leave it like this with all the sleeves, <laughs> but this is what it looks like so far. Okay, so the top here, we just sewed this much and left this lip here. And on this piece, on the side, we left this lip here. So the collar, this will fit around your neck and we'll make the collar soon. We do want to make sleeves and um, add some steampunk embellishments. But this is what it looks like so far. So let me grab some more yarn here and we'll go on to making the sleeves. Alright, to start the sleeve, I am going to, um, I have my piece right side out, okay, and we are going to start in the armpit area. As you can see, I turned this piece so that I'm looking at the inside of the piece. If you want to uh, work the sleeve inside out, um, I know that kind of sounds a little weird, but that's just how I did it. So I just wanted to show you, um, we're going to attach the yarn to the armpit area. This is the seam where the armpit um, area is. And we are going to attach our yarn in either one, either this stitch or this stitch. It does not matter, just one or the other. I'm going to go right in this one and hook on my yarn here. And then we're going to chain up two. One and two. And we are going to crochet double crochets all the way around and it has to be an even number. I am going to double crochet 72 stitches around. So yarn over, go into the same stitch that you just attached to because the chain up two does not count as anything. Yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Okay, and there is a double crochet. So I'm going to double crochet in each of these stitches around and I am going to double crochet 72 stitches evenly. If you need to skip a stitch here or there um, to make it an even number, or um, you can double crochet two together also, if you know how to do that stitch, you can also do that. Also, um, yeah, you can do more or less stitches than me. Just make sure it's an even number. So I'm going to double crochet 72, 
and once I get back around I'll come back and we'll go on to round two together. Alright, when you get back around, we are going to slip stitch to the first double crochet stitch, not this chain up two right here. We're just going to slip stitch right in there, yarn over, pull through and through. And now at this point, round two is going to start our decrease. So as you can see here, I'm going to pull this out real quick, so you can see the hole here. This should fit around your shoulder, around your arm, the upper part of your arm, right around here where the seam on my t-shirt is right here it should fit this hole should fit there okay so what we're going to do is decrease now to fit around our arm kind of tightly down to our elbow down to our forearm so what I'm going to do is decrease now you don't have to decrease as much as I am but what we are going to do is mark our stitches or our beginning and our middle here and I have two little pieces of yarn. You can use actual stitch markers or safety pins or pieces of yarn just to mark your rounds. And what we're going to do is just mark the first section. This is our first stitch, which you really don't need to mark your beginning because it's your beginning and we're chaining up every round and turning our work. But just for video purposes, I will do that. And then we're going to come all the way across, you're going to fold this in half, come all the way across to the top. You can even see where your color, or where your color, where your yarn uh, stitches change. These are our single crochets and these are crisscross stitches. So you can see right here is the seam. And you can just mark, um, I don't know, the stitches right, right there. Mark those stitches. Right at the top, right halfway through. Okay, it doesn't matter which how many are on this side or how many are on this side, it just matters um, where the location is, okay? And once you have that done, you've marked your stitches, we're going to mark them every round then. And what we're going to do is turn our work. We are, or we're looking at the inside of our sleeve doing that round, we're going to turn our work so we're looking at the outside. Okay, so now every even round we're doing... So round two, round four, round six, round eight, etc. We are looking at the outside of our vest. Uh, all the odd numbered rows, we are looking at the inside of our vest. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Also, for these rounds, uh, we are decreasing quite a bit, but you don't have to decrease as much as me. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can just jump to the next um, instructions to do a non-decrease. Okay, so if I decrease too much for you or too less for you, if, I, if you need to decrease even more, uh, if you have smaller, skinnier arms, you can keep decreasing. I'll just show you how to do that. We're going to chain two, one and two. We turned our work. The reason we turned our work is because we want the seam to be straight. If you don't turn your work around, your seam will diagonal and uh, it will be a traveling seam and that will not be... Um, flattering. <laughs> so we want a straight seam, so we're going to turn our work every round. And for this round, round two, we are going to skip these first two stitches, and we are going to go into the third stitch with a double crochet. So yarn over, skip this stitch, skip this stitch, go into the third stitch for a double crochet. Now we are going to double crochet into one of those two skipped stitches. I like to go on the first one, that way the second one is kind of eliminated. <laughs> so yarn over, go into the very first stitch that we skipped and make your crisscross stitch. Make your double crochet around that double crochet there. That way. That way you can't even see that stitch that we skipped and that is decreasing. Okay. Now we are just going to skip one stitch right here and double crochet into the next and then double crochet into the skipped stitch and that is our regular crisscross stitch. So we're going to regular crisscross until the next stitch marker and you can guess then where our stitch marker is halfway through we are going to make another decrease at that point. So that's where our decreases are going to be, the top and the bottom, the under the armpit and the top of the shoulder. So you can see here I'm just doing crisscross stitches. Just skip one stitch, okay? So this first one where we skipped the two stitches in the beginning, that was just our decrease, okay? So don't do that after that one stitch. This is now just skipping one stitch, going to the next stitch and making a double crochet and then double crocheting into the skipped stitch right there. Just like that. So just crisscross stitch 
until the stitch marker and I'll show you how to do another decrease at that point. Alright, I just made it to my stitch marker right here. So right before the stitch marker we're doing a regular uh, crisscross stitch on those two stitches there. Now with the uh, stitch marker there what we're going to do is skip two stitches and double crochet into the next way over here. Okay, and just like I showed you in the beginning of this round, we're going to skip one of those two and just double crochet in uh, one of the skipped stitches. So I'm going to go way over here and leave that middle one then unworked. Just like that. And then just continue with the regular crisscross stitches until the rest of this, until the end of this round. So skip this stitch, go into the very next stitch, and then double crochet into the skipped stitch. So there's your decrease at the top. And if you want to, you can move this stitch marker and wrap it around those two stitches, that crisscross stitch. That way, in the next round, that will be where your next decrease will be. And then every round you can just change or um, move this up to the next round so you know where to decrease. So now we're just doing the regular crisscross stitches until the end of this round and when I finish round two I'll meet you up we'll go on to round three together and make the rest of the decrease all right finishing up round two you want to make sure that you do do one more um, crisscross stitch in here although this chain up two looks like it's worked into this stitch right here that is still considered a stitch and that chain up two doesn't count as anything so just double crochet in there and then double crochet in the stitch before it to make your crisscross stitch just like that and then we're going to slip stitch to the first double crochet so not the chain up two go into the first stitch yarn over pull through and through then chain up two and turn your work around there we go okay and now we can go on to round three now round three is even a bigger decrease and this will be our repeat decrease um, for until we are done decreasing I guess until we get to um, mid forearm area so what we're going to do is skip three stitches here oh, this double crochet looks like it's worked okay so three stitches that looks like a chain one I wonder if I chained one anyway one two and three I think that's a chain one so don't just ignore that <laughs> I don't know what happened there so one two and three you can see the posts here one two and three sorry about the bells in the background here we're gonna skip those three stitches and go way into this fourth stitch right here the second crisscross stitch this one way over here so double crochet into that stitch and then double crochet in one of those three stitches I'm gonna go to the second stitch okay so leave the first stitch unworked and leave the third stitch unworked and yarn over and go into the second stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two don't lose your loops yarn over and pull through two and there's a decrease you decrease two stitches there. Now we're just going to do regular crisscross stitches until the halfway mark and I'll show you that decrease again when I get to that point. Alright, I just made it to halfway point here. We're just doing regular crisscross stitches until the halfway mark. We're going to do another decrease. So you can see the halfway mark marked this crisscross stitch. We are going to skip Let's see here. Uh, have we, okay, skip three stitches. So skip one, two, and three. Go into this fourth stitch right here. So skip a whole crisscross stitch and the next stitch right there. Go into the fourth stitch there. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And then double crochet in one of those three stitches. It really doesn't matter which one. So yarn over. I'm going to go into the middle one there so you can see one, two, three, this middle one right here. Go into that one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And there is the decrease. 
Now, it may look like there's a gaping hole, but there's also gaping holes all around, and you won't even notice that when it's on your shoulder. So we're going to move this stitch marker up, and I'll move it around this stitch right here. That way I can do that in the next round as well. Okay, so going on to the next stitches, we're just skipping one stitch and going into the next, making our double crochet, and then double crochet into the skipped stitch. And just do regular crisscross stitches until the end of this round. Alright, just finishing round three here. Slip stitch to the first double crochet. Again, do, just ignore the chain of two right there. Go into the first double crochet stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through. Now chain up two and turn your work, and now we're just repeating round three until this piece fits around our elbow and forearm area. This yarn is very stretchy, so just um, be generous with your um, decreases here. We are going to just repeat round three. So if you need to, just rewind this, see how I did round three. De decrease in the first stitches and then halfway through when you get to the stitch marker back here. And um, we're just going to skip the three stitches, double crochet in the next one, and then double crochet in one of the skipped stitches there. And then just do regular crisscross stitches on the crisscross stitches below them until the halfway point and then do your decrease again. Like I said, just rewind this until uh, to see round three, but we're repeating round three until this is tight enough around our arm. I am going to do round three, uh, repeat of round three for rounds four, which is what I'm on right now, rounds four through 12. So once I finish round 12, I'll come back on screen. We will go on to round 13 together. All right, welcome back. Here is where my decrease is. I just finished round 12, so you can see that it really went in a lot tighter. And when I put my arm through it, you can see that it is it fits around, I mean, up even to my elbow here. But it's pretty tight around there. So now, this will come up to my shoulder, and this will come down my arm. So I'm right above my elbow here. So what we want to do is now, instead of decreasing anymore, we want to just continue the length, however long we need this to be. Now, if you don't want wide sleeves, like how you can see in my photos, how I have wide sleeves on this, you can just continue now, round 13 till whenever your sleeve length is, you can continue on. Um, doing what I'm going to show you for round 13. <laughs> but um, what I'm going to do, I want bell sleeves, like belled out sleeves, like going to uh, increase. So I'm only doing, doing a few rounds of this um, non-decrease, non-increase round. This is just a plain crisscross row. So what we're going to do is slip stitch to the beginning here, the first double crochet stitch. Okay, chain two and turn your work around. So now round 13, since it's an odd row, we are going to look at the inside of our sleeve. Now because there are so many less stitches around, you're going to be turning your work quite often, but you don't want that traveling seam. So don't make, just make sure you're turning your work. And now instead of skipping any stitches, we are going to just go into the second stitch. So skip the first stitch, go into the second stitch and double crochet and then uh, go into the skipped stitch and double crochet in there. And we're doing that all the way around. So skip the next, double crochet in the next. Then double crochet into the skipped stitch. Just do the crisscross stitches, no increases, no decreases. Just do your crisscross stitches all the way around. Then slip stitch to the first double crochet of this round. Turn your work around, chain two, and do the same thing. And I'm going to do that for rounds 13 to 21. And once I finish round 21, I want to make my sleeves, bell sleeves coming outward, uh, wide sleeves. So I'm going to increase on round 22. But if you don't want to increase um, for the bell sleeves, you can just have straight sleeves all the way down. And just all you have to do is just continue this repeat all the way down. So that's creator's choice, but I'm going to come back after round 21 
and I will show you um, how to make the wide sleeves next. All right, welcome back. This is what your work should look like now. We have a longer sleeve. Now, this will get me to my um, forearm, like right to the mid forearm of me. Uh, but if you, like I said, if you want to continue and have your whole sleeve tight like this shirt is on me, you can continue this way. But I want to have a bell sleeve, so what we're going to do is increase significantly at this point. So we just finished round 21. So I'm going to turn my work and look at the outside of my sleeve here and go on to round 22. We're going to chain up two. Okay. We are going to crisscross in these first two stitches here. So skip this one, go into this next one here, and then make your double crochet in there. And then double crochet into the previous skipped stitch, just like that. Now what we're going to actually do is go into the very next stitch, so don't skip any stitches. We're going to go into the very next stitch and double crochet in there. And then we're going to double crochet again in this previous stitch where this stitch is in here. So we're going to go into this previous stitch right here. So there's actually two double crochets in this stitch. Okay, and we're going to do that all the way around. So go into the very next stitch right here. So no skipping stitches now. Just go into the next stitch and then crisscross by going into the previous stitch, putting it a double crochet in there. Okay, I'll show you again. We'll go into the very next stitch, double crochet, and then double crochet into the previous stitch also. So each stitch around is going to have two double crochets in it. We're just making crisscross stitches all the way around. So do that all the way around and when I'm finishing this round I'll show you how to finish this round uh, because we're going to be going into the first stitch that we worked in anyways. So don't skip any stitches. Just put two double crochets into each stitch but do your crisscrosses just like I showed you. So do that and then I'll come back and we'll go on to um, round 23 together. Alright, so I have one stitch left right here, so what we're going to do is double crochet into that stitch and then we're going to double crochet into the previous stitch because we want two double crochets into there. Okay, but we're not done yet. We don't have two double crochets into this stitch or into our very first stitch after our chain up two. So we're going to go into the stitch after our chain up two right here. Work around your chain up two because that doesn't count as a stitch. Make your double crochet and also double crochet into this very last stitch of the round that we had our last double crochet in there. Okay, so that's what that should look like. Now we're going to go to the first double crochet of this round right here. Go into there and slip stitch. Awesome. So now we're going to chain up two. And you can see here is the increase. Everything, the, the width of our piece is wide now. Okay, so now I'm just going to come up from there. So we're basically going to repeat what we did for um, rounds 4 through 12 here, right? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, no, 13 to 21. Rows 13 through 21, just not increasing anything or decreasing anything. Just this section, we're going to do that up here. So, I'm sorry about that, it's ro uh, repeating rounds um, 13 to 21. And I'm actually only going to do this for a little bit. We're only going to do it... I think it's seven rounds here. Let's see here. No, it's a few more than that. Uh, rounds 23 to 35. So um, turn your work around, skip the first stitch, go into the next, and make your crisscross stitches. Okay? So just do crisscross stitches around, no increasing or decreasing. Uh, just repeating that concept of what we were doing before we increased for um, round 22 there. But I'm doing round 23 to round 35, just like this. Once I finish round 35, we'll be able to fasten this off and go on to the next step. 
All right, just finish the sleeve. Um, now, if you want your sleeve to be longer, obviously you can just keep repeating that round. Um, this is what your sleeve should look like. I'm just chaining one here, and I'm going to cut my yarn and then pull it through that chain one there and pull tight. So that's secure. But you can see here, if you wanted to keep continue the repeat, um, you can make your sleeve longer and you know cover your hand or go longer even if your arms are longer but that is the whole sleeve how cool is that i love it so you can stretch this out to make it wide like that such a stretchy yarn okay and then grab your yarn needle right away make sure to sew in all your ends as you go just so that you're not sewing all of them in in the last minute or at the last second very end of your project because you want to be able to enjoy your project right away. So I'm just sewing it underneath some of these stitches and I showed you that earlier how to do that too. So now we want to make the collar and then after the collar we have the outline and then after the outline we have embellishments. How fabulous. Okay, so the collar, oh and you know what, I'm so sorry. You have to make another sleeve. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> I already made my sleeve so I kind of forgot um, to mention that. But make sure you make another sleeve exactly like the other one that I just showed you. I just wanted to show you one sleeve on camera because they are both exactly the same. So um, rewind this to see how we made the other sleeve. Now you could just have your cardigan like this and be done and that's awesome. Um, but I do want to make a higher collar looking thing for a little a bit of extra to detail and stuff um you know what let me grab my yarn really quick i um ran out of the ball of yarn here so okay going on to the next step let's grab some yarn here and we're gonna make the collar next so if you need to pause this make your other sleeve come back to it and we can make the collar so we're going to start on this side, so we're looking at the outside of our cardigan, and we're going to start on this side of the collar right here in this stitch, okay, on um, the front panel. This is the front panel piece, you can see my crisscross stitches here. The front panel piece that we skipped those last five stitches on, um, we are going to crochet on those, okay. Now this collar is just going to be single crochets. So we're just going to chain one and single crochet into that same stitch and then single crochet into each of these next five stitches or next four I guess all five of these stitches there we go one two three four five we are also going to crochet in these next two here but if you're um, crocheting across here the first row of this collar since this is like a intersection basically this is where our seam is I'm gonna single crochet these two stitches together so ignore this little straggler here go into this next stitch yarn over pull through go right into the next stitch which is on the back of the cardigan yarn over pull through then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops okay just like that and then we're just going to single crochet across the back. Let me turn this so you can see. There we go. So I'm just single crocheting across the back. And then when I get to the other side over here where this seam is, I'm going to single crochet these two together and then single crochet in those last five stitches. And when I single crochet in those last five stitches, I'll come back on screen and we'll go on to row two of the collar next. Alright, I just single crocheted across here. You can see here is my single crochet two together stitch where that seam was. And then, sorry it's sideways, and then these last five stitches here are single crocheted in. So now, um, this is the front panel here. We're going to chain one and turn our work so we're looking at the inside of the cardigan. I know it's a lot of fabric now <laughs> to turn around, but all we're going to do now is just single crochet across, chain one, turn your work around, single crochet across, turn your work, chain one, single crochet across. And we're just going to do that until this collar is as high as we want it to. Now what I'm going to do is crochet about 
um, I would say three, maybe four inches tall. And then what I'm going to do later is fold it down. So I'm going to single crochet across as many rows, and I'll let you know that in the next clip. Um, but I'm going to single crochet rows until they're about four inches. And then once I do that, I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to fold it over and sew it across right here to make a thick double type of collar. So uh, just single crochet across as many rows as you want for your collar and then I will come back and show you what to do next. All right, I ended up doing 20 rows total. I just chained one here. We're going to cut our yarn very long for sewing because we are folding it in half and sewing it down. So I'm just going to cut my yarn long and then pull it through that chain one right there. Okay, so you can see here, this is what the collar should look like. Here is, whoopsie, it's, I um, tried it on, there we go. I tried it on to make sure that my collar was as tall as I wanted it to be. Okay, so you can see here, the collar is going to fold down right here. And we're going to sew this down across this line here. And if you want to sew up the edges, you can as well. So I'm going to do that real quick before we continue doing the outer edge. So I'm going to grab my yarn needle and yarn my needle with that. And then we're just going to go into the corresponding stitches. So right into this first stitch here, go in to the back. Okay, and then through to the next stitch from the back to the front and get this layer as well. Okay, and just close this up across here. So we want to go into this next stitch up here, or on the top, sorry, my hand is like in the way here. Okay, so in the stitch here and then in the very next stitch right here. Okay, so I'm just going to sew this back and forth all the way across here, and when I get to here, I will fasten this off. I'm actually going to leave this open like this, and I'll just um, kind of squish it closed when I need to. You can sew this edge closed and this edge closed as well if you want to, um, but that's creator's choice. So I'm just going to leave mine open because they'll probably, once you sew it all together, it won't really open much at all. Anyways, so what I'm going to do is just sew this closed and once it's all closed up, I will fasten this off together and then we'll go on to making the outer edge. Alright, I just sewed this all closed along here. Okay, so now I'm going to fasten this off. I'm just going to come around a couple of stitches here. Okay, come back through that loop and then pull that tight. Okay, I'm going to do that a couple of times. Perfect. And then, just like how we sewed on that other, the front and back pieces, we're just going to sew in this end and sew in any ends that we have. And then cut any extra. And the next step is to crochet around the full edge. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to use a different color. And what we're going to do is we're going to start in this little corner right here at the base of the uh, collar that we made, okay? And I'm going to lay this out so we can show you where we are going to start. So we're going to start here, work our way down here, work our way around here to the back pieces, down around here. To this piece here, up around this piece, and then back up to this top right here, and we're going to end right here, and we're just single crocheting around. So let me grab my hook, grab some yarn, I'm going to use this lighter purple, this one is called medium purple, and it's Red Heart Super Saver. So this is just a little bit of Super Saver yarn, it's just a light orchid color, and I'm going to hook that on with my hook right there and just chain one and then we're going to single crochet into the same stitch 
and then go into each stitch along the edge or wherever your hook fits really just single crochet a little detailed um, edging there okay it doesn't have to be anything major and if you don't want the same or if you don't want a different color you can use the same color of your cardigan and that's totally cool as well so this is just optional I just wanted a little bit of a detail edge around my piece and once I have this all I'm just gonna single crochet all the way around this edge and once I'm finished I will meet you up and then we'll go on to adding embellishments all right when you come back around and you uh, crochet everything uh, along the whole edge here uh, just slip stitch to this next spot right here just go in yarn over pull through and through and then we're going to fasten this edge off so let's chain one cut that yarn pull it through and pull tight and we've just single crocheted around our whole piece I am just going to yarn my yarn needle here and sew in this end inside the stitches okay so now the last step is to add embellishments now you don't have to add anything you can just have your cardigan and congratulations it's finished <laughs> but I wanted to add a few embellishments and I did some off camera here I'll show you in just a second um, I did add some steampunk um, designs off camera and I want to show you how I added my embellishments. So I'll show you one, and then you can add them wherever you want. So you can see here, I've added, and you'll see in the photos as well, on this side of the front, I've added this button here, and then the chain, and then this button here, and added the chain, just sewed that um, in the back there. So I'll show you that in a second um, on the back side. I added this button here um, to close our cardigan. Now we use double crochets in this part, so there's really no button holes, but I decided that I would use like the space between the stitches as a button hole. And that's where, actually that wouldn't be the row. We'll go down a little bit down here. And that would be the row. There we go. So that's going to be buttoned right there. And then on the back side is what I'm going to show you how to sew on your embellishments. So you want to grab your yarn needle and the yarn of your main color. And as you can see here, I've added this sassy back side in the center here. Okay, gravity will make these chains go swoop and it'll look really good. So I have. Um, these pieces here and I wanted to add two more buttons right here and right here so these buttons I showed you in the intro of this video these are favorite findings it's a big bag of buttons I actually put them all in a ziploc bag because they were falling out of this um, but they're all in this bag here and they're just random um, buttons that I steampunk style that I found at Joanne craft store and this chain is this chain right here blue moon beads and it's a 36 inch metal chain you're just going to need a pliers to remove the chains i have 35 chains across here from this button to this button it doesn't matter how many you really have just um make sure they are all even so this is the covering this is also from joanne yarn craft store so blue moon beads and it's a 36 inch metal uh, chain okay so you can check out your Joanne store check the links in the description of this video and get these buttons and these chains and um, so I'm just gonna show you just these two and then you can place these wherever you want so grab your yarn needle okay and the main color yarn Okay, and yarn your needle with that. We're gonna go from the inside here. Let me count how many stitches I've two, four, six. So two, four, six. So right here is where I want to make sure everything's even. And I want to put that one right here. Okay, so then we're gonna go from the inside. Okay, and we're gonna go through the buttonhole 
and talk. Okay. And we're just going to, oops, got a knot there. There we go. Okay, and we're just going to um, go once, just back through to the inside. Sorry, there we go. Okay. Then we're going to flip this over to the inside and cut our yarn and then tie those two strands into a knot. Okay. Then we're going to take our yarn needle and yarn a needle with this two strands and then sew in those ends. Okay, and then cut any extra. So that button is sewed on. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing to this other one. If your steampunk button looks like this though, um, you can um, follow along here. One, two, four, six. Okay. So make sure that you're on the right row. There we go, right there. And we're gonna do similar, the same uh, thing pretty much. So I'm gonna grab some yarn and my needle. Go from the inside. I'm just showing you these two buttons only because every, all of these other buttons are the same. So you can do as many as you want. Okay. You can go up the whole back if you wanted, or just do one or two. Okay, so make sure they are lined up, everything's even, and we're going back in to the back side there. Then I'm going to come back out here, and then I'm going to end on the inside. Right there. Okay, then I'm going to flip this over again, cut my yarn. Oops, I don't know why that happened. Okay, and then we're going to tie these two in a knot. And I'll sew in those ends in a second. I just want to show you the next step. So sew those ends in as well. Then the next step is to grab the chain. Okay, we're going to take our yarn grab the long strand of yarn here I'm doing this really fast for the camera but you can take your time obviously and if I'm going too fast you can pause this and catch up so we're going to take the end of our chain here and go through this very last chain three loops so one two three actually four times four four times through okay just like that that's secure. Then we're going to cut this yarn because it's uh, the ball of yarn. Okay, so we have the two strands just like this. And we're going to go underneath this button and go to the back with one strand. Okay, grab the other strand, yarn your needle with that one. And go to behind the button and through to the back of your work. Okay, then flip it over and tie those two strands together in a knot. Okay, then you can cut these short, grab, I don't know where my other yarn needle, there it is, yarn needle, and sew in these ends okay and then you just want to do the same exact thing to the other side trim that short so the same thing to this other side now make sure that your chain is not twisted so what I just did is go went from this side and kind of just went like that so it's not twisted and then I took the yarn from the yarn ball Okay, yarn my needle. Okay, make sure it's not twisted. And went 
around one, two, three, and four. Then cut the strand and did the same thing underneath this button across from it. So just went through to the back and this one also through to the back. Fabulous. It's coming together. So you want to do that with all of the buttons and all of the chains. Um, now you can see in the photos and even in this tutorial where I located all of my pieces, um, you can use this as a guide for your pieces and I'll sew in those ends later. So there are the three pieces on the back, make sure it's centered down the center back. You can see here's the center back and it goes up and the gravity will make this come very perfectly round and you see that in the photos. And then also on the front here, you can see on the shoulder side here, we have this button right kind of like in the center where the sleeve is uh, or where the armhole is kind of right in the center there and then the chain just hangs down i don't know how many chains are here i kind of just eyeballed it and would it look good and then one right up here and then this was just the buttonhole but you, or the button to close it but you don't have to close it you can just leave it open but there it is the steampunk cardigan is complete oh my goodness i'm so excited super happy this done thank you so much for watching and learning how to make this big huge thank you to red heart yarns for all the yarn today for this project big thank you to my dad back here for filming the entire project with us and helping us out and um, taking all the photos and editing this tutorial and check out all the links in the description of this video for the yarn, all of these embellishments, the crochet hooks, all the tools that we use today are all linked in the description of this video. So thank you so much for watching today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Click the thumbs up if you learned this. If you make this cardigan, please share the photos on Facebook and on Instagram hashtag yarn utopia. All right, everyone, until next time, happy hooking. Oh, gosh. <laughs>